You ever just look yourself in the mirror and always just wonder, why the fuck don't I look this stylish? I mean, come on, look at me. I got the body of a professional duelist here, and God fucking knows that someday I will be the number one undisputed Yu-Gi-Oh dueling champion of the world. So what you gotta tell yourself to get through your day, and God fucking damn it, we're gonna be the best, because the shirt says I'm a beast, so why keep the beast in the cage, if you know what I mean. Fuck yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh, number one, America! You know, I never constantly understood why people are always asking me, Robbie, what deck should we pick up right now? Or the, should I sell my deck now? All right, so as of making this video, if you have spiral stuff, sell that fucking shit. All right, I don't, I don't care what you think. I don't care if you wanna play locals. If you're ready to just lose some money, well, you know, now's your chance. I mean, I, I heard the call of the dimes. It's everywhere, it's written on the fucking walls. There's blood everywhere down here on my fucking floor. It says, get rid of that shit. Now, this should be a no-brainer to you. That if you flood the market, it's going to be bad. So, if you want to keep spirals, because you don't think Konami's going to do anything about it, for some reason you're like, oh my god, oh my god, no, the, uh, Konami will never hit spirals. The deck is not a problem. Here's the thing. Spirals aren't a problem in your standard sense. But, the good news is, as soon as Resort goes to 1, it's dead Rooney. You can thank Konami Gods for that. So, that's how you put the nail in the coffin for that deck. Or they just put <laughs> Resort to 1 ban Master Plan, which would make no sense, but you know what, fuck it, they can do what they want. So there's that. That's, that's the what you should get rid of part. Now, on the flip side, if you want to play Spirals for the next, I don't know, month, not counting Christmas and New Year's, then go for it. I would definitely be, the entire Link Frames pack is out, so you missed a hype train there, but the true price increases haven't happened yet. Robbie, what do you mean? Didn't the cards already go up because of Japan? Well, let me tell you. We've seen things like this happen before in the game, that typically price goes here, price tends to go down because it does start to see play in Japan. Once the pack is announced for English, we will have the secondary price spike, which will go up, because then the people in the TCG will realize, well, fuck, it's time to act, it's time to get these things. You know, I always constantly talking about, and you've heard me talk about that you should have fundamentally everything in the game that you want to play. And I've talked about before, we have a global playset box right here, you guys really can't see it, but it has everything in the game that I could possibly want in. It's got metal foes, spiral cores out of it at the moment, we have sub terrors, um, we have Madolche, Dark Magician, Blue Eyes, Ancient Gear, there are a lot of things in there. Now in the perfect world, if playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh was your thing, I would pick a set, say start at the 2017 Megatons, I would pull out global play sets of every theme in there that I would possibly play competitively. And I think that's a good starting point. And then the key is, once sets release, you just pick up everything from the set and you're done with the set. Now, this isn't a very, very strange mentality to go about things. Because for example, you know, we had Maximum Crisis came out, or not even Maximum Crisis, uh, the set with Borload. Picked up Crawlers, picked up Altergeist, picked up the Metaphys stuff wasn't a lot of money, you know, and of course the evenly matches is the most expensive thing in the set you're picking up. But to spend $40 on three archetypes just to have them, sure they might get the reprints later on down the road, but if any particular support card comes out later on down the road that breaks these archetypes, then I'm not going to have an issue with them. You know, picked up Trick Stars on release. I think there are two ways to go about it. There is the pick up everything on release and not worry about it, you've got it. It's locked away in your global playset vault. 
Um, and if you can't afford that, you know, allocate some budget to it. It's not that hard to save a little bit of money. Most of the reason why most people often aren't successful at this game is because they're just not budgeting their money correctly, or they just they just don't want to spend money on the game. But budgets, nine tenths of the time, they're like, well, you know, I've only got twenty bucks to spend. Well, you know, fucking check out the Yu-Gi-Oh singles deals. You know, they had some of the stupidest Black Friday shit. Fucking an FA deck for like two bucks. I mean, well, granted, it's mostly commons, but you know, you get everything you want. You know. It's the things like this that the casual players need to act on. It's the very cheap impulses and things. You know, build your archive, you know? Plan ahead. You know, my friend who works at Walmart, literally making goddamn near minimum wage, is able to afford to play this game. Because he sets money aside and he does it correctly, you know? Second approach to this game is only have one deck. And this is the part that burns a lot of people. Because a lot of people go by this mentality. And this is... I only want to have Lightsworn, that's it. That's my deck. And... I know that this video is supposed to be what you should pick up, but... I, I state these points as a correction for you to make up your mind what you want to invest in at the moment. So... Budget your money and get beyond the mentality of only having one deck because if your deck gets hit on the list You know what happens your will to want to play Yu-Gi-Oh fucking dies with that deck You know, I'm not gonna say that I was that way with gadgets, but I always had the other deck You know during Teledead I had Teledead built with gadgets with Doom Calibers During Tears of Lightsworn I had gadgets Tears of Lightsworn and Destiny Heroes You know, it's expensive, I know, but if you're smart and you flip everything, not everyone's going to have the business mentality. Not everyone's going to understand, hey, you know, you should probably sell this now, pick it back up later. Gamma was an excellent example of that. If you were a Cyframe player back in the day, your Gammas literally peaked at 40 and went back down to 30. If you'd moved that in that time span and stayed educated, holy fuck, you made so much money, you know? It was insane, you know? And you probably picked up the Cypher deck for 10 bucks. Let's be real here, because no one wanted that shit. Pick up deck cores when they're extremely cheap. You know that FA deck core? It's all commons? Who the fuck knows? You know, I wouldn't be surprised that like Spirals and like Subterrors, Konami doesn't reprint Vendreds and FA later this year. It wouldn't shock me at the latest. If I was going for something to pick up, I've mentioned Vendreds before. You know, we're coming close to the unlimited printing of the Boreload set, Circuit Break. Why not pick up the stuff? You know, you probably should be able to pick up every playset in that goddamn set massively cheap. Besides, you know, you don't need a playset of Boreloads. Rocket playsets were like $15 on Black Friday. You know, missed opportunities. Uh, Rockets, Altergeist, they're definitely two. I did an, a video on Altergeist. Altergeist literally need one card. Same thing with Rockets. Rockets are an ex excellent example of they've got a lot of very good cards out of the floodgate. They just, they need more. And same thing with Altergeist. Having good trap cards that you can set directly from the deck, yeah, the enemy's just begun. Look at Black Wings. Black Wings, like heroes, they were the fan favorite for the longest fucking time, and they have so much goddamn support. But they had their time. But if if you want to play Black Wings, I would definitely pick up the stuff now. The thing is, for the money approach of things, pick up the cheap playsets while they're on the market. Because much like everything in this game, this is why I always focus on like the long haul, the the two to three year. You know, picking up everything now, while it's cheap, and you know, times come hard, you have to sell your shit. You might get lucky, you might make something. Or later on down the road, you're like, well, you know, I no longer play Metaphysics. Let's fucking go sell it. You know, it it's not that bad. You know, but having your own playset vault of cards that you can pull into because you want to switch to a different deck, it's not bad. It's not realistic for all the people in the world, um, but it's definitely something you should have. And on the point of picking up stuff, as I said, with the Link Frames pack coming out. Definitely, Lights One's cheap, Metal Foes are cheap, fucking Black Wings are slightly going up because Chris the Krakadons are getting more expensive. Latest set 
archetypes are always very cheap while they're in circulation. Older things like Necros haven't gone down. I still have my Necros core from way back in the day. It's not going anywhere. But you have to look at it from the mentality of not only is this what I want to play, is there a possibility I might want to play this? And you know, it's different from the standpoint of being a Yugi tuber, because if I ever want to do tabletop and with cool things, you know, we just pull out the core, add stables to it, and we go from there. But your average duelist going to, say, a medium-sized casual locals, you know, you'll always have the one guy that's trying to play meta and outdo everybody. But being able to change from that one deck, like I said, it's a disadvantage of having one deck, because if you get burned out of the game, you can't change, because you'll have to trade the entire deck to get something new. And ain't no one want to keep trading deck for deck at the same value, because eventually you're going to just make a bad trade, or you're going to just be like, yeah, I'll take the $50, and then you go spend the $50, and then the asset you had is lost money in value. Yep, doesn't sound like a good idea to me. So, current metagame in circulation cards are your best bet. If you want to go back and pick up something like Metal Shea, you're going to be spending a lot of money right now because the the, the hype around Link Brains, wait for it to drop, and then go in and see if you can get Magellines for 10s, you know? Literally almost nothing in this game doesn't get the reprint again at some point, which is really fucking weird. And who's to say that when we get the Link of Rains back in English, whether or not it be a DUSA set or a Gold Series, I don't think it's going to be a Gold Series, I think it's going to be a DUSA release, you guys need to realize that more stuff's going to get the reprint. So it's something else you need to take into consideration. Is the deck I want to buy now going to get a reprint before the time I want to play it. Unlimited editions of sets are something to take into consideration because they definitely lower the value of things. We've got Vendra Chimera's already touching $4. They're going to go down much more in the future, but you need to ask yourself, can I wait for the unlimited printings or do I need that first edition on them? Or do I want to test this deck now? Or can I wait until later? You know, these are all things you have to ask yourself. You know, I'm just here helping you ask the questions you need to be asking yourself. After all, as a pro duelist, such as myself, I know everything. God, I should have put on the National Sarcasm Society shirt for this video. <sighs> I can't believe people think that pro dueling actually exists. Best fucking comment section I've read in a while. <sighs> you guys are definitely something else. So guys, what are you looking to invest in right now? I know the questions and making you think for yourself is a different approach to the style of video but realizing things that should be are two different things also shout out to the Walmart cookies I bought these I haven't eaten one of these yet thank you family I have three cookies left I'm going to fucking walk away and there will be no cookies left but they taste like chalk. And whoever ate my chalk cookies, <sighs> hope they tasted chalky. <laughs> Alright guys, later. Don't buy Walmart cookies. Or do. Cupcakes are good. <laughs> <laughs> the ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.